Today I'm ranking each Premier League club's biggest wonder kid from the season so far. I've got a cutoff of 21 and under, which makes this a little bit more tricky. As you can see, I've got five categories in front of me. The chosen one. This is only a single name. I can't have more than one player in the top tier. Breakout star. Now, this is going to be a group of players that are right in and amongst it as being the best youngster in the league. Eye-catching. These are players who I think this season have taken a stride forward or are worth keeping an eye on. Needs more. I want to see more game time for this player or I want to see the club give them more opportunities. And no youth. There are a few teams today we're going to talk about. Under 21 minutes are severely lacking. And we're going to start with Arsenal. Because only one player that's currently aged 21 or under has got any minutes for the Gooners in the league this season. And that is Ethan Wanieri. There's plenty of 22, 23 year olds in this Arsenal squad. They've got a really nicely built team. But not a lot of minutes for teenagers and youth players. And rightly so, man. Arteta's going for it all. Next up, we go to Aston Villa, where we find John Duran, who, unfortunately for him, is having to play second fiddle to one of the best players in the league this season, in Ollie Watkins. I think, in terms of combined goals and assists, nobody has put up a higher statistic than Ollie. I think I want to see more from him, because when I have seen him play, he looks extremely imposing on the pitch, he takes his chances really well, he's got an absolute cannon of a strike, but just 346 league minutes this season. I think just two starts in the Premier League, three goals. He has got minutes elsewhere to a level, but like I said, competing with Oli, it's always going to be difficult for a 20-year-old. At Bournemouth, I wanted to go for Alex Scott. Like I was thinking instinctively, let's talk about Alex Scott here, but we cannot ignore what Zabanyi is doing down on the South Coast because this is a 21-year-old who's arrived from Dinamo Kiev in the summer. He's played every minute of every available game for Bournemouth at the heart of their defence. He's formed a really solid partnership with Senesi. I think we're talking about a really high-level prospect here. Very controlled on the ball, but equally has some of the characteristics of a throwback defender in that he just loves to stick his head in there. I think I'm going to put him in eye-catching just because, you know, Bournemouth's defence has been mid-table. We're going to talk about Jared Branthwaite later and what a season he's had. Do we need to start having conversations a little bit more about Zabanyi? At Brentford, again, a total dearth of options. My choices really were Yarmouk and Aaron Hickey. And, I mean, Yarmouk's kind of come into the side recently, played very, very bit-part roles, hasn't he? I think he's got a fair few appearances, but they've all come off the bench, effectively. 614 minutes of football. And Aaron Hickey, I mean, he's picked up that major hamstring injury. He's played over 700 minutes of football. So I'll put him in needs more. Still think he's a really high-level prospect, of course, coming from Italy. He can play on both sides of the fullback position. Very two-footed. Such a shame he's picked up those injuries because I think he had the hamstring injury, didn't he, around November time. And then he had the setback in February, still not come back since then. Fingers crossed we get to see him playing football again this season. That brings us to Brighton, where we had a host of options, really. I could have talked about Hinshelwood, who's had a really good campaign. Buenanotti put up 13 starts this season. It's a shame and CISO picked up that really bad injury because I would love to have talked about him in here but just the three starts coming back to fitness now I think he's a really high level prospect and that kind of leaves us with Evan Ferguson who despite feeling like he hasn't featured as much this season has still started 15 Premier League games now it's not a huge number but it is already more than last season he scored six goals I think the issue probably comes from the fact three of those came against Newcastle in that amazing hat trick so we haven't really seen Evan Ferguson kick on in the way some people were predicting in that he was going to become a hundred million pound striker this summer. I still think there is a massive prospect in there. He is extremely talented, extremely well-rounded, very clinical in front of goal. But last season, I maybe would have had him in breakout star. I want to see more game time for Evan Ferguson. I know he, I've, I've just said he started 15 games. I want to see him being the starting number nine week in, week out. Difficult though, isn't it, when Joao Pedro is having such a good season? But could we see him developing and getting those minutes that Danny Welbeck's getting? I'd like to see it, man. At Burnley, I nearly went for James Trafford. You know, he's put up two and a half thousand minutes this season, which is more than Wilson Odebear, who I'm going to talk about. But I kind of feel like with the recent reintroduction of Murich, I know he had the whiff against Everton, that Trafford's stock has fallen maybe just a little bit, especially amongst Burnley fans. I think Wilson Odebear 
If you were to ask most Burnley fans, would say that he has an extremely high level future. Now, I spoke about him last week, so I don't want to go too in depth, but this is a player, you know, again, first season in the Premier League since signing from Troyes for 12 million euros. I need to see more of him next season. I think Burnley are going to scratch and claw to keep hold of him, even if that's in the championship, because he's going to be excellent down there. That brings us to, in my opinion, our chosen one. Cole Palmer, I think, has been the best under-21 footballer in the country. Top three under-21 players in Europe for me this season. He has been electric. And if Bukayo Saka wasn't able to qualify for the Young Player of the Year award, which he is, I think Cole Palmer would walk it. I still think he's a contender to win it even with Saka there. But Saka, for me, has had the better season. When I watch Chelsea, often it feels like there isn't an awful lot of strategic cohesion in how to implement an attacking plan. Often it feels like, get the ball to Cole, he'll make something happen. And that's what's happened this season. Cole Palmer has created moments from nothing. You don't often look at Pep Guardiola sales and think that was a mistake. This feels like a mistake. This really feels like a mistake. But we're talking about a 21-year-old who last week put up eight shots and eight chances created in a single game. He's only the second player in Premier League history to do that after David Silva. I think this is an extremely special player. Manchester-born, Withenshaw, Man United fan playing for Chelsea. Ugh. At Crystal Palace, difficult, but I've got to select Adam Wharton, really. I think since he's come in from Blackburn, that was a fairly substantial fee for Palace, £22 million. It's one of the most they've ever spent on a player. So we should really talk about him as being a key asset for the club because he was exceptional in those 22 games, 22 starts in the first half of the season at Blackburn. And since arriving at Palace, he looks comfortable. He looks Premier League ready. Some people might have only seen him for the first time, really, in that Manchester City performance where he caused that Man City midfield problems. His ball shielding, ball retention, exceptional. Decision making under pressure, exceptional. We are talking about a future England international here. A player who is extremely, extremely well-rounded. In my opinion, Adam Wharton's ceiling at 19 years old is easily a top six club. This reminds me of a Jared Bowen going to West Ham and Ebe Riche Eze going to Palace again. I think Wharton's not going to be at Palace long. Honestly, eye-catching. He's almost in breakout star, but if I've got Zabani in there, I'm putting him in there too. Now, talking of breakout stars, Jared Branthwaite is going to be the first name in there. Pushed himself immediately into England contention, which is probably the reason I have him in there. I think he arguably, in many people's mind, could start for England. Now, I still think there's a few holes to his game, and I think you saw that against a team like Newcastle in the 1v1 against Alexander Isaac, lunging in a little bit, a little bit of immaturity there, but that's what's going to happen for a 21-year-old centre-back. He's two-footed, six-foot-five, great sprint speed, fantastic defending in the 1v1, which not a lot of people speak about with him. You know, you watch that performance against Burnley at the weekend, and you're blown away. At Fulham, it's another no youth up. I'm afraid the only under 21 to get Premier League minutes this season, 75 minutes from 19 year old Luke Harris. Let's dip into Liverpool. Lots of selections here, could have gone Harvey Elliott, but I'm actually going to go Jarrell Quanza, who I also think kind of has become a breakout star. He hasn't put up the minutes of his Abanyi and, you know, very different to Wharton, who's come up from the championship and immediately had an impact. But I think to be playing at the level he's playing in a title race and deputising so well for a player like Canate, who is clearly, you know, an outstanding European centre-back, should not be scoffed at. I really hope as well that people don't start getting on Quantz's back after that mistake against Manchester United, because that can happen to a 21-year-old. A 21-year-old that is extremely comfortable on the ball. You look at his touches, his passing ability, his calmness and composure alongside Van Dijk, it looks exceptional. And these guys have obviously had standout seasons, but none of them, not even Brantway, are doing it at the level Quantz is doing it. You know, competing for a Premier League title. At Luton, we've got another defender. It's Ted M. Mengi. I'm going to put him in eye-catching as well, because when he left Manchester United, I think there were a few question marks. Can he step up to this level? He'd had injury problems at United. He's gone to Luton. He's put up 2,000 minutes. Clubs like Bayer Leverkusen were interested in him in January and it's easy to see why he's so physical so reliable I don't see him playing championship football next season if Luton go down difficult one this because I wanted to talk about Jeremy Doku who has flattered to deceive at times hasn't he 
one Premier League assist, and that came at the weekend, since the 4th of November. But I still think he's been eye-catching. His work in the box needs work. We can all see his finishing and his final ball not quite there. But there's no denying he's extremely exciting to watch. You know, we interviewed Gabriel and Saliba last week. They were talking about Jeremy Doku being one of the hardest players to play against in the league. In the 1v1, you are dead. And it often takes time for players to come to Manchester City and adapt to how Pep Guardiola wants to play his football. Not many players do that overnight. It's not easy. And it's really not easy if your game is sort of individualistic. Because classically, Pep is much more team-oriented than individual. Doku's going to have to work on that, but I think it's hard to deny he hasn't been eye-catching. He's a very, very watchable footballer. Okay, at Manchester United, I actually was really, really close to putting Garnacho here. I know that Maynard is the talking point at the moment, but Garnacho, he started 31 consecutive games now for Manchester United. The most goals of any teenager in the league. I think he's got 10 Premier League goal involvements this season. He's been amazing, Garnacho. His off-the-ball work totally changed. His attitude is fantastic. He's a player you could build a team around, Alejandro Garnacho. I really, really believe that. I also could have talked about Hoyland, but I want to talk about Kobe Maynard because he has become a breakout star. He has certain facets to the game it's almost impossible to find in youngsters. In his composure, his mentality, the way he talks about football, very, very Jude Bellingham-esque in his mannerisms off the field and his maturity. On the field, I think there's a lot of Paul Pogba about him. In his ability to push players off, in his ability to score excellent goals, his close control and his dribbling... Very Paul Pogba-esque. I don't know he's got the athleticism of a Paul Pogba. And I don't think he's got the passing range of Paul Pogba. But there's definitely areas of his game that make you stand up and go, wow, what are we watching here? For an 18-year-old to have this composure to dictate the play. He's in a midfield with Casemiro and Bruno. He looks like the most mature guy in there. The hype around this guy is rising so quickly. I just hope he can keep his feet on the ground. And it feels like he can. Okay, let's talk about Lewis Miley. I think it's definitely been eye-catching. 17 years old. You know, he's a lot younger than some of the players on this list. He's four years younger than a player like Cole Palmer, who I've got down as the chosen one. He's just been monumentally brilliant for Newcastle in a season where they have had horrendous luck with injuries. Lewis Miley has been awesome. He's been a water carrier. He's good on the ball. He's athletic. It's actually a shame that he's picked up this back problem because let's face it, Newcastle's injury record this season has been awful. Let's have a look at his FB ref because it's very nicely rounded. He takes the ball really nicely on the half turn and you've got to remember he's 17. I don't think this is being talked about enough. These numbers for a 17 year old in the Premier League to have started 14 Premier League games. The youngest Newcastle Premier League assister, the youngest Newcastle Champions League assister. I don't think when I watch him, he's necessarily got the natural ability of a Kobe Mainu or like a Cole Palmer, but he's had an amazing campaign. Likewise, Murillo, still only 21. Like, how is this guy still only 21? Again, another 21-year-old centre-back alongside Branthwaite, alongside Zabani. He's a classic Brazilian centre-back, isn't he? In that he can still be a little bit rash. And it's hard to find left-footed centre-backs that are as good on the ball as him. At Sheffield United, I didn't want to pick James McAtee because he's on loan from Man City. So I've had to go for Willis Eula. I think we'll just put him in needs more for now. You know, not loads of game time, 700 minutes. And just part of a struggling Sheffield United side. You know, we've seen him down playing for the likes of Derby before. I think in the EFL next season, it might be a big campaign for him. At Tottenham, there are two options. One was Pap Sar, who absolutely is one of the Premier League's most underrated midfielders. Super well-rounded, does everything really well, wins all his ground jewels, carries the ball lovely, plays excellent passes in between the lines, is a goal threat at times, very, very athletic. But I think it is Destiny a Doggy. In fact, it is. Let's just be honest, it is. And if we're real, he is the closest of any player on this list to being the chosen one. He can't go up there because of Cole Palmer, but we'll put him first there. He has been amazing. He's the only player on this list that is the best player in the league in his position. You know, Cole Palmer, you can debate. There are right wingers like Salah and Saka and Tens like Phil Foden that have probably been as good, if not better, than Cole Palmer. 
There's not a left back in the league that has been better than Destiny Adoggi. I think what's so impressive about this is you think of the Destiny Adoggi at Udinese, this flying wing back who dribbled like a monster and could beat people. Now he's being asked to play inverted. He can get on the ball. He can pass it. You look at these pass completion numbers and his progressive passes absolutely amazing but also he still has that dribbling element his ability in the final third and he's really hard to beat 1v1 i haven't seen many wingers get the better of destiny a doggy this season at 21 years old it's frightening tottenham have got an absolute world beater on their hands here a world beater west ham shockingly for having classically one of the best academies in the league have only given 80 minutes to under-21s this season. And Wolves as well. I mean, 530 minutes for Hugo Bueno. I've got to put him in needs more. But, I mean, he's had a few stinkers as well, Hugo Bueno, hasn't he? Let's be honest. Hasn't lit the world like this season. So, he has to go in there, really. Because Wolves have not given loads of minutes to under-21s either. Either way, that is my tier list of the best wonder kids from each Premier League club this season. I've got... Cole is the chosen one. Destiny and Doggy pushing him very close. Let me know who your chosen one would have been in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching. See you later.